So those of you who are familiar with these cars, you know that these PCV systems are prone to, if you're in sustained G-forces, hard cornering into uh, continuing those G-forces through a corner. You can overcome the PCV, dump oil into the inlet of the turbo, and then of course cause smoke. So I had one smoke event ever. So this was not a failed PCV, one puff. This wasn't an ongoing issue, this car hasn't. The Mark 8 valve was not done because it was broke, okay? So just let that sink in before everybody loses their mind about this Mark 8 valve. So now that you're caught up, let's get into the Mark 8 valve itself. So last Thursday, so just under a week ago, today's Friday, um, installed the Mark 8 retrofit, which you have to do this dummy plug and the Tiguan style hose, which this one is capped with a bolt clamped in there. Some guys put a cap on the fitting itself. Either way, that's an optional part of this retrofit. Uh, did a video on fixing my APR. Uh, turbo inlet because they just like hot glued that sucker in there. I TIG welded it. Uh, props to AT APR for putting out junk Chinese products. Do better guys. Um, where was I going with that? Okay, so this was installed last Thursday. Car fired up. Everybody says they idle better with these. Placebo maybe, but I agreed. Sounds good. Um, literally installed this 20 minutes before I left to go to the mountains. Threw the kids in the car, took them up to a cabin, had a great weekend. Towards the end of our stay, I decided to hit Devil's Whip, the mountain road that I frequent at least once a month and smoke show just absolute train of smoke uh, my sister and her husband were out of earshot which is at least a mile or two behind me and we're still driving through my plumes of smoke and i was pushing the car maybe 25 percent versus a typical day up in the mountains i'd be going 70 80 percent so uh yeah if i was overcoming this valve with the kids in the car just kind of cruising then obviously something not happy here so talking to the guys on the forum um there's been a lot of effort put into critiquing this setup and getting real analytical with the data uh they're all pointing to the oil cap not being stocked so i popped that back on there and was very time limited with what i could do with the car because i was into my work week so working very long hours, double shifts. My only time to drive the car was to and from work. So I beat the brakes off the car as much as I could, cornered and braked as hard as I could. Couldn't get a single puff of smoke. Great, it's fixed. Because I've been playing on a track day, just got track tires mounted. You guys might have seen the short about getting the car prepped and the little Easter egg in there that it broke. So now here we are, compression test, not as good as it was the last time i'll show you that but it's definitely not failing the limits on these cars are huge tremendous so what we're going to do is i don't have a vacuum gauge or really the time because i've got a honey do list to get to after this and i really hope this thing runs the way it should because it was running terrible but you know four file plugs will do that so we're gonna swap back to the Mark 7 valve and ship this valve out to the guy that's heading off the testing. I don't wanna butcher his name. Oh, all right, fine, I'll butcher it. Durhaas, or I don't know. I'm sure I'll get comments about that, but he's heading off the research on this on the forums. He's got a spare one of these, so I'm gonna send this off to him. He's gonna autocross it uh, in a week or two, I believe. I think he's hitting VIR with his valve that he's already ran a couple times with and has good results. So what the thought is on this is either A, this puppy was bad right out of the box, never stood a chance. 
B, that the oil cap not being OEM caused a pressure differential that caused this to prematurely fail. Or C, something I noticed popping under here to start my diagnostics today, this dummy plug could absolutely, absolutely be a source of a leak. So they do not fit all that well. But like I said, I don't really have time or the tooling to deep dive into this. I think I'm going to leave this sensor in here when I send it out. I'll have to talk to him about that. I don't know if his fits any better in that, or obviously we're going to have to come up with a better solution. I don't know if this is under pressure or vacuum or both, but that doesn't seem great. So it could be a potential issue there. Either way, I'm going to swap back to Mark 7. Hopefully this thing doesn't sound like Subaru anymore. Sorry for rambling, but I just, I can't stress enough. The car wasn't broke to begin with and the Mark 8 valve very well could have just been bad out of the box. So we're not discounting the quality of the Mark 8 valve. Things do happen. Like I said, I work in aviation and I get bad parts out of stock that cost more than my house. It's just the nature of all things mechanical. Sometimes shit don't work the way it should. So let me start buttoning this thing back up. New spark plugs, PCV, and hopefully it'll run good and I can put my all seasons back on it and get it out of here because I've got a broke LS swap BRZ outside that needs some attention and I've got a gate to build for a chicken coop. So let me dive into that and yeah, we'll, we'll see what it does. So working backwards to forward, this VVT cap, which I did a video on a couple years ago, was installed on the car, never had any problems. The only oil that's ever seen is down there on that side of the cap where it's supposed to be. The filter itself never got dirty. So it was doing its job. Actually, in a previous video, I had a BL, the original, Mark 7 PCV start to show signs of failure. So I changed it. I want to say that was two years ago and this has been on the car three years. I'd have to look back, but regardless, it's been a long time. No issues out of this, no issues out of the Mark 7 BL that was on the car until about a month ago, not my last trip to the mountains, but second to last trip, I had just one puff of smoke. Spark plugs came out looking pretty nasty as I'd expect from the two quarts of oil total that it burned. Um, not that great at navigating with the bore scope. It's trickier than it looks, but I'll pop some of that footage in here. It's really kind of hard to tell. Um, the cylinder walls still have a good cross hatch and there's some clean spots on the pistons that are, uh, at first it scared me, it looked like detonation and there very well might be some in there, but I don't think it's uh, anything that's gonna keep this off the road. Just did the compression test, which I'll show that footage as well. Um, but before I get into all that, I just wanna go over what the deal is. So this is a Mark 8 PCV, and I've had a ton of messages and people putting their two cents in on what went wrong and if this is the culprit i want everybody to just chill out and actually listen to the facts of the case before you start giving your two cents because i've heard some really off the wall stuff and some really just it's exhausting so
it's alive. It doesn't sound like a Subaru anymore. Uh, let it warm up a second, check the oil, and we'll take it for a little rip. Well, so far so good. It sounds fine. I'm gonna let it warm up before I get on it, but yeah, just trust your gut instinct. I mean, if you throw a part on and immediately have issues, there's always a possibility that brand new part fresh out of the boxes, uh, you know, has a manufacturing defect or some sort of issue with it. So, you know, a little unnerving to have so many faults and basically waste two hundred dollars of, uh, of track time. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully, I'll uh, sort out some kind of better solution and get up to the mountains to test it before VIR this December. I'm still hoping to make it up there, provided the weather isn't like this. Um, but yeah, we're gonna shake this thing down.